Hey everybody, uh, coming to you with a late night update. Um, Kyle and the engineering team finished the ability to download a file or a screenshot and then upload it, change variable name in the same flow or working together, right? So either or. This video will highlight that. Um, please, 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 if you like these time-saving tips, using automation, please give this a thumbs up. Please give this a subscribe if you're not already. And then say hi and say what you think about this f f picture because I'm not in the studio. <laughs> so let me know. Um, I'll let Kyle show you how downloading and then uploading in the same flow uh, works because this has been heavily requested um, a big improvement. So take it away. Hey everyone, so I wanted to build a demo video today that is going to take a screenshot um, and then upload that screenshot to whatever service we want to share that link, I guess. So um, one good example that I have for this is let's say that you have whatever thing going on and you want to send your clients um, results on their website speed. We can use something like gtmetrics.com. We can go ahead and record our type, which is entering whatever we can send from another app, which I'll get into after this. And then this is gonna generate some sort of report. And then we can screenshot this report and upload it um, to that other service like what I'm talking about. So um, I'm gonna pause really quick while this finishes uploading and we'll get into the rest of the things. I can explain a little bit more about how uh, this is gonna work for other sites and I guess how you expand on this a little bit more. All right, now that, that finished, let's go ahead and add a scroll down step so that we can capture all of this page in our screenshot. So I'll click play really quick. Um, make sure that. Next, what we can do, I didn't mean to end that. I thought I was making a different video. Let's continue recording. Um, next, what we're going to do is we're going to go to imagebb.com. I think that might be a decent one. Uh, for image uploading. So I'll add a go to page step of going to imagebb.com, save, I'll play this, and then what we're gonna do is let's record a click step. Might not have loaded yet. Record a click step of start uploading, and then we're gonna convert this to a download step and use our screenshot as the value for this. So. How we do that is we're going to go to change step type and then convert this to download. And then we're going to click inside the download step and um, that is, whoops, this is an upload step. Uh, it's a long day. Change the step type to upload, then we click into it and um, the file path that we're going to be uploading is going to be at step five, which is going to be that screenshot step. So I'll go ahead and click I'm done here. I don't think there's any other, let me see. If we upload anything, if there's anything else we need to do uh, afterwards, I got that works. And then, okay, so after we upload it, we need to record a click step of upload, save that, and then let's scrape that link. This is really annoying. That went down really slow. Um, so plus scrape single and then let's get this input here so if i um oh there we go we can click no copy actually we were going to want to scrape sorry i just saw that they had copy scrape is definitely going to be better so when scrape runs um it's kind of annoying this is an input field but it is still going to uh, grab the link from here when that scrape step runs so when this finishes running, um, this has a couple cool things for us. So we're gonna have a trigger that's available, which can be like Airtable, Webhook, um, whatever we wanna do. That's gonna tell us the website to go to, uh, which we can fill in here. Then it's gonna test the site. We should add a delay for a little bit. Uh, let's add half a minute. Then it's gonna scroll down, take a screenshot, go to this page, and then let's update this since our screenshot step changed. So it's step six upload that file, click upload, um, maybe add a delay if it's a large file. I guess we can do that. And then we can scrape the, uh, the viewable link. So 
Um, let me hack together a quick Airtable base and we'll set up, uh, I guess, an automation that's going to work with that. Okay, so we have a quick Airtable base. I just finished connecting my account. Um, this is called Instagram leads, but that's fine. Uh, we're going to change this to the URL, or which is going to be the URL of the person's website we want to visit. And we don't need any of these other fields. So what we can do now is if we go back into our automation, um, let's name this really quick so I don't forget this. And then we're going to set up our trigger. Um, our trigger is going to be Airtable because we're going to fire this whenever we get a new row created there. So if I select Airtable, new record, uh, and then we add our connection, select our base, which I forgot what our base is. I don't think that's the right token I added, even though I named it correct token. This is the right one. Untitled base, and then the table is Instagram leads. Um, and then what we want to do is we want to add a new record here. So I'll click plus. I don't know if that's the standard way to do it. Uh, and then let's add appsumo.com. So when we do this, oh, shift enter, uh, we can then click test app and check for new data. And what this will do is this will start that, it depends on the app, it'll start checking for new data. Um, some apps, it might say, it, like it says, it might take up to five minutes. Um, I'm gonna allow it a couple of seconds really quick to look for that data. Basically what this is doing is this is checking Airtable and monitoring for new records to be created um, since not all websites instantly send us that data back. So I'll be back in just a second once that record arrives. All right, so we got a record here. Um, you can just click check for new data until you have records to choose from. And we can see what came in right here. So I'll go ahead and save this trigger. And then all we need to do to make this triggered by a new row in Airtable um, is turn this on and set the variable to use what came from Airtable. So anytime Airtable, Air uh, sorry, Airtable has a new record, um, let me go ahead and select one again. Uh, we have this URL that comes in from here. So I'll save this. Um, and then when we turn this on, whether desktop or cloud, every time a new Airtable record is created, it's going to run this flow, which is going to go to GT metrics, um, type in the URL from whatever was an Airtable, click the whole process, go through that process, take a screenshot, upload that screenshot to this image BB site. Um, and scrape the URL there. And then we can end this whatever, with whatever we wanted. This could be a Slack message of so-and-so's client report is ready, whatever we wanna do. So hopefully that showed you guys how you can use screenshot um, or download with upload uh, and how those two steps can kind of play together.